Hey everyone, it's Kate, and we just have the overhead camera today, but it is day two of our 12 makes of Christmas, and I'm gonna show you how to make this really cute pom-pom scarf. It is from Lada Jan's Daughter's Everyday Style book. Um, this is a great book that is very popular with our customers, but the instructions for this scarf are a little bit scant. So I am going to show you how to do a mitered corner with an acute angle and how I like to sew the pom-poms on. I have a little bit of a cheater method that makes it easier. <clears throat> so to cut out this scarf, oh wait, before I start that, I'm gonna say that um, we're filming this on Facebook Live, but if you're watching on YouTube, you can, um, you should like this video if you like it, and you can subscribe to our channel if you wanna learn more about sewing and quilting. And if you go to our 12 Makes landing page on our website at theconfidencestitch.com, you'll see a bunch of linens with pom-poms laid on top of them. The, and if you click on those, you'll see the yardage that you need for making this project. And we've also, we've combined colors with, um, linen colors with pom-pom colors that we think look cute but you can use any fabric and any pom-poms that you want. To make this project, you want a yard of fabric and three and one quarter yards of pom-poms. To cut it out, you just need to make a 30 inch square out of your fabric, fold the square in half, um, corner to corner to make um, a diagonal and then cut along the fold and you will have um, a 30 inch by 30 inch by 43 inch triangle. Um, so in the book's instructions, she doesn't have you hem the scarf at all, but I just think it looks a lot nicer if it's hemmed and there aren't any raw edges. Um, it gets a little tricky to hem when you have a really um, sharp angle like this. So I'm going to show you how to mar martyr, martyr, <laughs> miter a sharp angle. So I have my little mini um, fat quarter scarf here. And um, I have... I'm marking, I have marked where I'm going to turn the hem. I'm gonna do a quarter inch clean finish and then turn it another half inch for the full hem. And this little star is where the new tip of my scarf or my corner will be. So I just wanna show you when you hem such a sharp corner it really starts to look like origami and might be mildly terrifying you might think you're doing something wrong but i want to show you so you know that you're not so i've done those are the clean finish edges and then i'm this is my actual hem i'm gonna do this one at a half inch and then it's a little hard because I didn't hem the rest of it, so it's popping up. But if I had full, if I had done the rest, it wouldn't pop up like this. So then I'm going to fold this one at the half inch. And believe it or not, it's going to look beautiful. So now I've got this nice junction here, but I've got this big, huge tail of origami um, and I because so I've marked though where the new tip is going to be and I'm going to flip around to my other acute corner here and um, so this is just the same as I just pressed but 
I've put in two pins and they're both right where the folds meet and they're both perpendicular to my edges with the balls um, toward the center of the project. And I'm only going really through one layer of fabric. You're not pinning, you're just really marking. And then I'm gonna flip this so it's right sides together and I'm leaving my quarter inch clean finish edge and I'm gonna match my pins up again. Or not again, I guess they weren't matched up to, in the first place. And then what I do is just grab one of the pins and pin where they are, oops, where they are. And then I'm, I wanna kind of flatten <clears throat> the rest of this tail and match up my two folded edges. So I'm gonna grab Hopefully, uh, I think I grabbed the wrong one, but um, so I have, here's my tip, my new tip. I'm just gonna pin these in place. I'm gonna repin, yeah, I'm gonna repin right here so I know where to start. And then I'm gonna, I like to draw this line. I guess you could freehand it, but I'm gonna draw a line from this pin where my two pins matched up down to my new, the new tip of my triangle. And now I'm gonna sew along that line and I'll meet you back here. Oh, you can see me now? Hello. So you're not gonna be able to see me sew while I sew, but you'll see what I did when I get back to the overhead. Um, I mean, I guess you could make this scarf without hemming your fabric, um, but I, then you wouldn't be able to wash it. And I feel like some fabrics would fray and it would just start looking ratty after a couple wears. And I love my, handmade things to last. One of the things I love about making my own things is that I can make them slightly or extremely higher quality than what you can buy in the store. Okay, back to the overhead. Um, so I have sewn right along that edge. So I've sewn right along here. I think I'm getting instruction here. Oh, there. I've sewn along the, the edge that I drew. And theoretically, <clears throat> you should turn it right side out and check your work before you cut. But you really can't do that because of this sw origami swan hanging out here. So you got to trust yourself and trim. I'm going to trim a little bit off the corner here carefully. And then I just kind of finger press this seam open. I don't want to try to do it with a iron or anything fancy like that. And then turn it right side out. And I have my handy Point turner, um, point turners make me really nervous because more times than I'd like to count, I have poked too hard with them and poked all the way through. So you wanna just be super gentle with your point turner, but you're getting your nice mitered corner all the way out. And Ta-da! You can press it flat. I think I will. And press it more flat. And so it looks really nice on the wrong side and then on the right side, it looks super duper nice. So 
I, might, I just want to show you how easy mitering corners is when you have a right angle. So here's the right angle on the scarf. And when you put your pins in, they just make a nice, neat and tidy X. And um, you don't have to, when you um, turn them right sides together, you just have a short little ways to, to sew and it's easy peasy and very straightforward. So if you've never mitered corners, I would miter this right angle corner first and then do the weird um, super acute corners. So after you miter all your corners, you do wanna, you, you would turn, you'd be turning your whole hem, um, the quarter inch and then the half inch and then you will top stitch your hem in place. Here's from the wrong side. And now it's time to put the pom-poms on. I find when I put a ribbon on or anything, I don't know, almost anytime I put a little decorative thing, I like to use this craft this sewing and craft tape it's um, an eighth of an inch and you can base basically means that you can glue the the trim to your project and i it's double-sided tape and i just stick it onto the hem pull away the paper and then stick the pom-poms to the tape. And I think that's, it really reduces stress when you wanna make sure that your pom-poms are right on the edge. I feel like pins, it would be moving in between the pins. And if you didn't pin, it would be really hard to make sure everything was in place. I was surprised that the these super sharp corners are not actually that hard. Um, you will have to kind of do a little fold over on the tape, but that's just, it, it was pretty easy. I did make sure to go as far toward the tip as I could before I pivoted, um, but that was pretty easy. And I used um, an edge stitching foot and moved my needle close to the edge. Um, you just have to make sure that you can steer clear of the pom-poms and have your needle land where you want it to. So that's how I stitched the pom-poms down. And then when I got to the end, I wanted to be able to make a loop that was closed and there wouldn't be any raw edges. So I did what I do when I'm binding a quilt or binding a neck, uh, knit, knit neckline and um, would start sewing, leaving a tail and then stop sewing a few inches away from where I started and, um, and then cross the two on top of each other and mark a point where they meet approximately in the middle. And then, especially with the pom-poms, um, I trim the pom-pom tape about a quarter inch from each, from each edge. And then I'm gonna fold these so that they are right sides together and sew them. And we're just gonna pretend that I did. Um, and I'm gonna remove the, this tape. I'm just gonna fold this under. And I mean, I guess you could just fold it and not make the loop, but I usually make the loop. So you can fold it in place and just stick it with the tape and so all the way around and no one will know where you start, started and stopped. There's just a tiny extra gap between the, the pom-poms. So that is how I make this great pom-pom scarf and I'm really excited to wear it. 
Um, so uh, thanks for watching our second day of the 12 makes of Christmas. We have 10 more days with 10 more projects for you. And we'll be back next Wednesday at noon mountain time when Maisie will show you how to make wool mittens. So thanks for watching everyone and bye for now and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.